Think responsibly. You people. You people. Gave Aaron Judge the MVP months ago, and he had a grand slam last night. He's got 30 home runs before the break. But tell me how Shohei Otani isn't the most valuable player in the history of baseball. Your favorite stat, Bob, last night. Ten strikeouts, two RBIs, and he stole him based on a Wednesday under a waxing moon. First ever to do it! Everybody strikes out of this. Give somebody else a chance, Shohei. It's always about it. We'll get to Otani in a second. Tennis news of the day, and it's big. Rafael Nadal has withdrawn from Wimbledon. A seven-millimeter tear in his abdomen. We saw him take a medical timeout in yesterday's match. Now it's too much to go on. His quest for a 23rd major no longer. His semifinal opponent, Nick Kyrgios, walks over to the final on Sunday. Clinton Yates around the horn to you on the news of the day. I think just watching that video is tough for all tennis fans, seeing the doll with that range of motion that is so afflicted. And you think about what could be going down the line. We talked about how much we were looking forward to this matchup between yeah. him and Kyrgios because Kyrgios is in such good form. But overall, Nadal is 6-3 total in his career against Kyrgios, but he's only 1-1 one one on grass, and Nick is the best grass player on the tour. There's an outside chance that he just looked at this and didn't just say what's going on down the line. Winning that match alone was going to be too difficult, and he's got things that he's trying to do down the line again. In terms of other grand slams, I think Nadal made the right decision here, and I'm happy for Kyrgios to be able to get to a position from strength because he also had injuries in his last match. Mm -hmm. Israel Gutierrez around the horn to you. I would just like to get Clinton back on to talk about Nick Kyrgios a lot more. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would say it. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> Every single time. Uh, the thing that made me laugh, or not made me laugh, the thing that made me sad into the most is not only is he not going to get, we're going to get this great Kyrgios and uh, Rafael Nadal matchup, but if I'm Taylor Fritz, I'm thinking to myself, wow, like I couldn't take this guy out and he had a, an abdominal tear. Like he couldn't fold in my match. He had to wait uh, until now to do so because, you know, obviously he had a great match there in the five setter. But I think, you know, we're, we're missing out on a great matchup, a great semifinal. Um, it does feel like, uh, on the other side, that uh, Djokovic is going to win against Cam Nori, and that's still a great final right there, where you talk about Nick Kyrgios and Djokovic. But when you know the all-timer of tennis, you wanted to see a Nadal-Djokovic final again, potentially. And yeah, this is just a sad day for tennis because it would have been a great uh, final. Guys, so uh, let's think about this now. He was down two sets to one when he had the injury yesterday, and he came all the way back, one in the fourth set, and then wins a fifth set tiebreaker. So you want to talk about a guy that's a warrior and a battler and a fighter. You know, you could just see in that video, he just can't serve the ball, so he's not going to go out there, and he's worried about the long-term ramifications of that injury. It's too bad for uh, Wimbledon because it looked like maybe we would get uh, Jokovic and obviously Nadal, but don't count out Nori because he's going to have the home crowd, and now you have Kyrgios in the finals mm -hmm. against either Nori or Djokovic. That's going to be real interesting. And Bob Ryan. Even without Nadal there. It was, it was honestly going to be appointment TV for me tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed as a, as a sports fan, and that's number one. I, I think about in terms of Kyrgios uh, that um, if he are, is to go on and win, even and, and God forbid it's against Nori, will it be regarded as a real championship? You know, is he going to have to listen to that? Oh, boy, how he'd react if people tell him, you know, it really wasn't that great, you know. You didn't have to play Nadal, and then you beat Nori. Oh, I, I, I can't right. wait for that. <laughs> so, you know, anyway. But I'm sorry, I wanted, to, I wanted to see that match. Isola, last word after the horn. Well, you think about the way Roger Federer plays. It's so graceful out there. And Nadal has had so many of these injuries. That's why it makes what he's done so remarkable. He's such a physical player. It's taken a toll on his knees over time, his elbow, and now he has his abdominal strain. The fact that he's still playing tennis at this high level, at this age, it's remarkable. It says so much about him. We move on. Zion Williamson signing his contract with the Pelicans. Quote... I'm locked in, baby. End quote. He also says he wants to prove that he's a winner. Israel, around the horn to you. Contract secured. What's on the line this season for Zion? 
Well, I think just as a basketball fan, you wanted to hear this, even if you believe this already, right? It's not only that, hey, I, pro- I want to prove I'm a winner. I want to prove I'm not this injury-prone bust. But even just him signing the five-year deal, no player option on that fifth year, sort of committing to the, the franchise and saying, I'm not going to bail when things, you know, when I get good and, and this is a small, fr- uh, small market, etc. So I think all those things, yes, we need to see it on the floor for a consistent stretch of games. We need to see it for multiple seasons. But if you're actually asking, hey, what do I want to hear from my young player who has yet to prove anything really, but, you know, has uh, this large money and this large contract at his hands, then I think, yeah, this is exactly what I want to hear. I want to be a winner. I'm going to commit to this franchise, and I don't care about my past. I'm moving past the injuries. Clint Yates. This is a high-pressure situation as far as I'm concerned. We're a lot closer to Greg Oden than we are to Hakeem Olajuwon in terms of where Zion Williamson was taken in this draft and the expectations. And I don't necessarily think that's fair to this kid, but for everything that New Orleans has poured into him, for everything that we thought that he was going to be at Duke, we've been watching this kid since basically middle school. This is a big deal situation for not only him, but the franchise. And I hope that he can get it back together from a health standpoint. We know how those foot injuries affect big guys, and I don't know that the expectations are going to be fair to him, but I do appreciate the fact that he's actually given this a rip and taking it pretty seriously because that was something that was questioned in him before. Bob Ryan. I uh, think it's very simple with Zion Williamson. We know how good he is and can be. He had 27 points a game as a rookie, shot 60%, blah, blah, blah. We know all that. However, he should not be paid by the year. He should not be paid by the month. He should not be paid by the game. He should be paid by the quarter, maybe even by the minute. Because the big question with him, from the time he, we first became aware of him back in high school, can that body hold up? That type of body, and we've almost seen anything almost like at that extreme, doesn't usually last very long in basketball, folks. I can go down the list of so guys. So you question uh, the Pelicans uh, committing that long to him? I, I, he, he to. I just wish from their own protection. They had yeah. to, but their own protection in a better world, there would be protection for them. Because this, this, he's utterly okay. unreliable Or in a better world, we're thankful play. there's protection for the player, I guess, would be the opposite side to view that. Let me ask you this, Bob uh, Ryan. Yeah. The way the Pelicans have played this over the last year and a half, he's going to be ready this month. No, sorry, two months from now. No, sorry, six months. And it's played out in a way that Zion has taken a lot of the blame as he has been unable to play. Do you believe there's a good marriage between the two now? Well, I think they, they need his image. He, he represents something that they don't have in the, otherwise on the roster. He represents basketball down there. They need him. They're, they're, their hopes and dreams are, are all around him and what he can be. I understand that. I think there's good faith here. I think I trust him in his word that he is dedicated. He does want to play. I just hope the body allows him to do it. That's Frank, all. Frank, you know the Pelicans are an emerging team. You saw what they did. Yep. Uh, is this marriage solid? I, oh, I, I definitely think it is. And let's remember, they went out and got C.J. McCollum, and Brandon Ingram became an all-star caliber player. So they have a good um, uh, unit around him. What's amazing is if you go back to last year, July 6th, it was his birthday, that's when he broke his foot. Then they told us in September, oh, no, he'll be ready for opening night, and he wasn't. And a year later, he signs a con- He did not play a game, and he's getting $183 million guaranteed. God bless the NBA. But here's what he's proven. <laughs> when he's out there... He has, think about this now, only Michael Jordan has scored more points than Zion Williamson in his first 85 games. Thank you. What's the yes. problem? He's only played eight. That has been established. We've seen players, Joel Embiid, I'll give you one, who didn't play many games in his first three seasons. The team was committed to him, and now they're reaping the benefits of that. But you brought up the C.J. McCollum trade. You remember the first story that came out after the Pelicans traded for C.J. McCollum? Somehow it came out, why hasn't Zion Williamson called C.J. McCollum? Why yeah, hasn't a 21-year-old called somebody? I mean, come on. Uh, th- this is, so there has been some disconnect between the image the team is putting out there about the relationship and the image that Zion has. Don't you think, Israel? Is it whole now? Is it solid? Well, here's what you need to uh, – pay attention to is look what Zion puts out, right? And Zion does not put out somebody who wants to seek attention. He does not want the spotlight. He wants to thank his YMCA back home. He wants to, you know, be a loyal, like I said, you talk about the contract, five years, not a player option in year five. So he wants to be a loyal person. And I think that's all you can go by is what Zion has shown you. And yes, obviously he went to Duke and yes, he, you know, got high profile pick and everything else, but he is not the attention seeker. So I do not think that there's an issue uh, with the organization. I think he's just got to go. Last word. 
the team made a mistake. David Griffin made a mistake when he came out on media day and said he'll be ready for the start of training camp. When you put a timetable like that there and Zion's that ready, then everyone's looking at Zion Williamson. How come you're not playing? They all told us you would be back by opening night. I think that's where the friction was. But when you give someone $181 million guaranteed over five years as an extension mm-hmm. and he hasn't played, I think the relationship is okay. And by the way, when he played, he averaged in a lot of games 61 uh, two seasons ago. He averaged 27 points and shot 61 percent from the field. The guy is a big time player. Just needs to get in shape and stay healthy. One more story here. Associated Press talking to Troy Vincent, an NFL executive. And here's what he said. The future of the game is flag. An intriguing comment from an NFL executive. And he says that an ultimate goal for the league is to make flag football an Olympic sport. Now, Israel Gutierrez, I believe you are our bureau chief here for all things flag football. My question is, do you believe Vincent is being truthful when he says the future of football is flag? Is he just talking about how the Olympics are in reach for flag football? Or do you believe he thinks a future of no tackling may be on the horizon? No, I think he believes that the future of football involves a lot more flag. I don't think necessarily, at least not in my lifetime, I'm going to see an NFL that does not include tackling and, <laughs> and you know, football pads. So what I do think is that it's more inclusive of a sport if you, inc- if you make it flag football, not just to body types who aren't ready for the NFL, but also to women. I mean, I have... Uh, women in my flag football league who have traveled the world this past calendar year uh, representing the United States in flag football. And so there's a lot of opportunity there. And in terms of an Olympic sport, absolutely a lot of potential, a lot of fan-friendly type of stuff with the sport and for people of all uh, body types as well because there is semi-contact, semi-contact flag football. So I think he's just saying expanding the sport in expanding general. Expanding the flag sport football to the Olympics. You believe it's within reach. Bob Ryan, you've covered how many Olympics? Are flag football going to be in the next one you cover? <laughs> Eleven, six, summer, five, winter, and I will tell you this: that what, I, what I've learned, what I, what, what we're all seeing about the Olympics is that the the uh, the, the horizon has shifted. Uh, there's things they're talking about to put in the Olympics that we wouldn't have believed at 50, uh, 25, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, uh, like 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 break dancing, for example. And I mean, so don't rule it out that flag football could find its way in, but it's not going to replace tackle football in America uh, in any of our lifetimes. I'm sorry, no. It's about a half dozen states now that have flag football on the high school level. Frank Isola, do you believe the future of football yeah. is flag? Well, maybe 100 years from now, 50 years from now. I don't think anytime soon. By the way, so you mean to tell me you can, no one can tackle or catch Tyreek Hill now. Now you're going to put him in a flag like that and try to get it from him? <laughs> Good luck. And, and Izzy, to your point, though, about body types, if you were to have that, you're eliminating all the big offensive linemen and defensive linemen. It's just going to be a sport of small, uh, quick guys. Really Maybe that's no. something they want. Any boy it's summer? Is that happen. what you're saying, Frank? All right. Clint Yates, how about you? Let's not bury the lead here. A former football player who was a hard-hitting dude himself thinks the current what? model of the NFL is unsustainable. That is the news here. It's unbelievable that he's actually saying that. If you think about how that's going to you know, meet out over generations, that does not bode well for the NFL. As for the Olympics, I think there are other sports that are probably a little closer to the line to get to the top. Ultimate Frisbee comes to mind. It's kind of like flag football, and a lot of people play it as well. But, again, that's the news. Football players don't good. think people should be playing football. Precisely. And then, I mean, we say this very Soberly, the news this week from Demarius Thomas, his family revealing yeah. CTE. This was a, a man in his early 30s, and he had already 33. risen to a level that his CTE was very serious, and in his death played a role. That's also in play in this conversation. Thanks for your thoughts. Take a break. Keep the show. Hey, Otani is on right now. And yes, his entire career has been a stretch of dominance, but this one right now may be his best. On the mound, last four starts, 4-0, no runs allowed. You go back one more start, a whole run allowed, and he's 5-0. And here's what he is as a batter versus all the players he's faced as a pitcher. Ready? Home runs, Otani leads 7-1. Hits, Otani leads 25-16. Hard hit balls, Otani leads 37-26. These, that's an entire team's list of guys on the other side, and he's above all of them, Clinton Yates. So today, what are you buying? What are you selling from Otani? 
I'm buying everything from Otani. I've said this before, but it almost feels like there should be a trophy above MVP for what he does. But as far as this team is concerned, I'm selling a lot of it. They've had four different managers this season. They had an insane losing streak. They had a brawl that was totally nuts that embarrassed the entire league. If you're Anaheim, you got to figure out how to get things together because if I'm Otani, I don't want to be there. There's a big joke that goes around LA, which is that the last time of the year you talk about Otani is on All-Star Game weekend. That's coming up. You don't want that to continue to be the case. Is for Gutierrez. Yeah, he wins an MVP. In that case, you're talking about a wasted MVP season. It's probably more than the Angels want right now. I just think in terms of being a, a lover of baseball and be, seeing something you've never seen before, watching a guy responsible for pretty much everything that happens for your wins, I think that's never going to get old, obviously, because nobody else is doing it. And so watching it last night against the Marlins was pretty Frank, you gave Aaron Judge the MVP in April. Uh, <laughs> are you beginning to read? The record. Classify the word value and valuable after seeing yeah. Otani. You're, you're 100% right. I mean, there, there was a thing called Fernando Mania in L.A. Doc Gooden every five days that he pitched yeah. in New York. Pedro was must-see uh, TV as well as Randy Johnson. But Shohei Otani, you get to see him every night. It really is one of the more remarkable sports stories that we've seen in the last 25 years, and it doesn't get enough attention. Mm. Bob Ryan. With all due respect to uh, basketball, football, hockey, and even soccer, Shohei Otani is the most compelling athlete on display in America, in North America. He is the greatest show in, uh, on our earth. It's the kind of act. The only other place you'd see something like this is Williamsport, PA, where pitchers sometimes pitch and bat cleanup. We have never <laughs> seen anything like this, and, and uh, you cannot say enough about it. And he's got to be the cannot. MVP then, right? If he's still, I mean, Aaron Judge is having an all-time year, but if this guy's doing it on both sides of the field, right, Bob? Well, best player, best show. But don't get me started on MVP and the word valuable, which is distorted. I'll the give you, I'll, let me get you Please. started. Hold on a second. What's more valuable than being able to pitch one day and then hit the ball to the moon the next day? Uh, it's, a, it's much too long an argument that we can have here about the. I'm here. Clinton's here. Israel's here. Frank, you know, there's a great statistician out there. I want to give him some credit. Jeremy Frank. Highest slugging percentage with runners in scoring percentage the last 50 years. Otani is above Barry Bonds and Trout. Lowest slugging percentage allowed as a pitcher with runners in scoring position. Otani is above uh, Aroldis Chapman. He's number one in both those categories. Yeah. We'll move on. The video NBC Boston's Alicia Palumbo posted, which was shot by Bry for Holmes, your number one source for Holmes in Worcester, of Chris <laughs> Sale trashing AAA Woo Sox tunnel to the clubhouse. This was after our five walk outing. Thought to be his last rehab start. I know today was a bit of a hiccup, he said. I want to pull my weight, he said. Bob Ryan, whether the walks or the tantrum is the bigger concern. But how do you call a guy up after he melts down like that? Looks like he's squeezed by that ump, by the way. Now, this, this guy is unvaccinated. He's already uh, a problem for management and for everybody. He, this is juvenile behavior. Un, un, absolutely uh, un, undefense, indefensible, and he ought to apologize immediately. Right, guys, Sola. I'm selling this summer sale. You cannot behave like that. First of all, you're actually a guest on the uh, AAA team, and to behave like that uh, with younger players, the performance was bad enough on the mound. It was actually worse when he got off the mound. Is Ru Gutierrez? Yeah, the control issues extending into the back hallway where he was entirely out of control both have to be uh, disconcerting for the Red Sox. I would say the latter, the hallway, they probably expected from him. It was the inability to pitch right now that they need to fix. I think they'd be willing to deal with uh, the expression and all that if he is looks like his normal self, but obviously it doesn't look like that yet. Max Scherzer shows up to Binghamton with a thousands of dollars spread and gifts for all of his teammates. Chris Sale shows up to the brand new Polar Park, which opened last year and destroys the daggone thing. You should be embarrassed for yourself, sir. Not becoming of a teammate. And this could happen once publicly with Sale destroying the jerseys when he was in Chicago as well. Yeah, yeah. That is a great Max Scherzer story you brought up. It was, was it $7,000, $10,000 worth of tomahawk steaks he gave to everybody on the AAA team while he was doing yeah, his rehab start, spread, and then gave him AirPods, uh, which they all have AirPods, <laughs> but they've all also lost AirPods yeah. before. So, <laughs> Israel Gutierrez, Bob Ryan, thanks for your time today. Bob, we don't have enough time to talk about what happened there. Uh, Frank Isola, Clinton Yates, Showdown.